Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. Today, we've got a real treat for you. We're finally gonna test out the wonderful moldy leprosy Mosin that here on the channel we have named David Shipman. If you've watched the channel before, you've seen this guy in a few videos, but we haven't shot him yet. Quick backstory on this. Again, this is a moldy leprosy Mosin because this came from the infamous classic firearms batch that had some real, real uh, rust problems, especially on the exterior. Now, this one has been looked at and ruled safe. If you have a rusty gun or a rusty Mosin like this, doesn't mean it's unsafe necessarily, but what it does mean is that you need to have a competent gunsmith certify it before you go out and try to shoot it. You can ask me if I think it's safe to shoot your gun, but I'm always going to give you the same response. You need to have a gunsmith look at it because I don't have the expertise to be able to tell you if it is safe to shoot a gun or not. Okay, that out of the way, there's a lot of firsts in this video. This is the first time we're shooting this rifle, David Shipman. This is the first time we're shooting him with the uh, infamous Hurst shifter bolt, which we made on another video. This is the first time we're shooting a Mosin with the Bad Ace Tactical No Drill Scope Mount, which you can see here. It replaces the rear sight and just goes on here. No permanent modifications have been made to this rifle, even though that's hard to believe by looking at it. This is the first time we're shooting a Mosin with this POSP scope. It's a variable 3 to 9 zoom. We currently have it on 6, but let's go ahead and take a look at exactly what the reticle is and what it's like looking down this cool piece of glass. Kind of hard to see, so I apologize. We got a simple triangle reticle there, and we have our uh, distance measurement there based off of the height of a target. Now, I'm not sure if that's based off of the height of a man or a tank. I would have to look in the manual, but it's it's one of them. You can see there, based off of the height, tells you the distance away in meters. And it does illuminate, although we're not going to be using that because it's pretty good lighted out here. But nevertheless, the POSP is a pretty cool scope, folks. Alright, so now that we've kind of seen the scope, uh, another first is, of course, the Texas Precision Muzzle Brake, which uh, slides over the front sight base, and it locks on with a couple brass set screws. I don't know how well that's going to hold up, we'll see, and you'll also be able to see if that baby goes flying down range, hopefully it won't. It's a really nice, solid piece of kit, so I really hope that it holds on really well. Uh, so I got a 10 round magazine here and as you can see this is for range use only. Someone has marked on this mag. I don't know who but the good news is we're at a range today and we're on a bench here so we can actually get a decent idea of what's going on here. Now I've never shot this so we don't exactly know where she's going to hit yet but one interesting thing we get to test is uh, Bad Ace Tactical advertises this scope mount as um, aligning perfectly or providing perfect alignment, rather, to the bore. Now that's a really tall statement, right? And we're going to see if that passed any sort of muster at all. Theoretically, we may have to adjust the up and, up and down some, but the windage should be pretty relatively close if we can go by anything with what they're saying. So we're going to go ahead and find out. Now the trigger on this rifle is actually pretty decent. Uh, the Hurst shifter bolt tends to give really nice trigger pulls, or at least nicer generally than uh, standard Mosin trigger pulls. This one's, I think this one's I measured right at about a, 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 about a five pound trigger, which is not bad for a Mosin, but it's very crisp. So I'll take it. All right, I think that's 10 rounds, so we can get loaded up here. Now, the distance, oh, that's one other thing with Archangel mags is sometimes the latch doesn't work as well as you'd like it to, which is right here, and sometimes they can kind of come out, so that's one thing you gotta watch. Now, the distance we're shooting at today, probably about 100 yards. We got a little triangle popper out there, and maybe you saw that when we took a look at the scope here, but uh, 
we're just gonna see we're not doing anything crazy with paper we're just kind of gonna see uh, how this gun performs as a whole this isn't necessarily about accuracy today this is just the first time we're actually getting to try out this gun some of y'all have probably had some frustrating experiences with Archangel mags as well. This one, I think, could probably use a little bit of work. Seems like it likes to hold eight rounds, but also it might be better to load it with the bolt open. Archangel mags are one of those things where it's really love-hate. A lot of people love these. A lot of people hate these. And, you know, that's fine to each their own. Uh, you don't even have to like Archangel uh, stocks, but doesn't mean you can't enjoy watching this video. So I'm going to get my ears on here, and apparently I have a fly looking at me. I don't think he's going to sit on there very long when we light this baby up, but let's go ahead and see how this guy shoots. All right. And see if this guy will actually feed. There we go. Oh boy. Wish me luck, folks. Fire in the hole. Ho, oh, baby. I don't know if y'all could hear that, but we got a hit on the first try. I aim low. I always aim low if I don't know where she's going to hit. I can have a better better field of view uh, of, of if, if she hits higher than I'm expecting to. She hits higher than I was expecting her to. And uh, if y'all are wondering why I refer to David Shipman as she, well, David Shipman here's preferred pronouns are she, her. I may need to adjust this a little bit, but for now, I'm gonna, let's see. Uh, let's see, so she hits low. Or no, she's shooting high. Well, you know what, I'm gonna give it one more chance before I go anything crazy with adjustments. Let me get my ears back on here. All I can say is, David Shipman didn't blow up and we hit the target on the first try. I can't ask for a lot more than that, folks. And honestly, the recoil is not that bad. That muzzle brake seems to really help, but let's put a few more rounds down range and I can get a little bit better idea. <laughs> oh man, I, I love this gun. This gun is so horrible. How do you not love the world's ugliest Mosin, right? Fire in the hole. I had my ears in all the way. That one I think hit, might have hit a little bit low actually. I think with a bolt, I almost have to put a downward tilt to it in order to get it to feed, right? Sometimes that happens. That's just the nature of the Hurst shifter. Hit, all right. I aim a little bit low. I gotta say, the bore alignment seems not bad. I, I'm really impressed. Like, I just slapped this together with some Loctite. Seems fine. Very sturdy, no movement at all. Now you notice here the archangels have this little hump here. I like it because I can put my non-dominant hand there. Really handy. I do apologize for the wind as well. There's a rule of thumb, anytime Big Sam goes shooting, it's always windy. Well, we had a few technical difficulties there, so I apologize for that. All right. <laughs> oh, this is one of those guns where it's so horrible, it's wonderful. I 
might be hitting just to the left. I think that's just a little bit low, so I'm trying to dial in exactly how low I need to aim here. And once I have that in, I think I can actually make an accurate adjustment. I'm just not there yet. Okay, Hit, baby! Ho! Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Ha ha ha! There's nothing like ringing in steel, folks. On a late afternoon, late spring day. Whew, I think that was eight rounds. Wow, oh, this is kind of addictive. You know, this is a great gun because if I scratch it, who cares? It's already the world's ugliest mose, and what are we gonna do? Make it uglier? I don't know. Is that even possible? I don't know. I tend to think not, though. That's what I think. Alright, so let's get tap into our second box here. We're going to get a few more rounds loaded up. I got to say, I like shooting this gun a lot more than I thought I would. So far, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the setup. The Archangel's a really lightweight stock because it's composite uh, polymer and carbon fiber. But the muzzle brake really makes it pretty nice to shoot. You also get a really nice recoil pad back here, so really nice. All right, we got a few more rounds here. Hopefully we can get a few more rounds in before the wind gets too bad. And I got to figure out exactly where our feeding issues are. Maybe I'm not coming back far enough first. We'll try that next time. Fire in the hole! Whew. I got to say, with that muzzle brake, this baby is loud, folks. Woo-wee! You really got to, you almost need double set of hearing protection in here. I think I may have to aim a little bit more to the right, but it's close. Okay, she's loading a little better now. Oh, we are really close. We're shooting around. I gotta say, there is a joy of having a gun that's so aesthetically horrible and ugly and rusty, but the bore is really nice. And that's what we have here on this right. Alright, so I got one round in here. I want to check the muzzle brake, make sure we're clear. We are clear. Muzzle brake's hot. It's not loose at all, though. So that's really good. That's really good. We already got, I don't know, 10, 15 rounds through this, and muzzle brake hasn't loosened yet, <laughs> and it's still there, so that's a that's a really good sign in and of itself. I'm going to go for a farther target, the big, the big gong, because I'm not so much in the mood for uh, sighting in as I am for ringing some steel. You know what I'm saying? I think y'all know what I'm saying. Let's ring some steel. Make sure my ear's way in there. Hit, baby! Oh, yeah! That's what I'm talking about. On just to the right, actually. There you go. Let's see, is she hitting to the right? Oh, I think that was a hit. Man, alive. 
like I say, I'm so far I'm not the biggest fan of these magazines, but I really like the concept and I really want to like them because I like the Archangel stuff. Again, this is not for everyone, and if you don't like the Archangel, that's fine. Uh, more power to you. There's a lot of good options out there, including, well, original wood Moses stocks uh, to each their own. But I do like it. Um, the magazines, again, these are pro mags, so eh, we're already dealing with a little bit of a dubious quality issue there. But I, I, I think with a little bit more tweaking, maybe a little bit more bending, we can get this. The big issue I have with these is just the the retention ability and the retention is this little uh, metal spring looking guy right here which is supposed to just hold them in and once you put it in the stock it'll actually disengage this and it'll pull it out away from the magazine such that then your cartridges can just feed normally so it's sort of like a disconnector for the cartridges I guess uh, until you have actually loaded the magazine but you know what folks this has been a great stress reliever, and it's nice because this is the first time I've actually gotten to shoot one of the moldy leprosy guns. And I spent hours of my life cleaning the mold and rust off of this gun. And it's really nice that now I don't have to think about that. I can just be at the range here with y'all, enjoying this atrocious and yet wonderful at the same time Mosin Nagant. 9130 rifle and now I don't quite remember when this guy was made because unfortunately the uh, uh, the bad ace tactical scope mount does cover up the uh, barrel marking so I can't really see it but I believe this guy was either a 1940 or a 1941 uh, it may be a 1940 or it may be a late 1941 because this does have a high wall receiver so it wouldn't be a 19. Uh, 40. Although there were some high wall receivers in 1940, but remember those were only for the Tula PEM sniper rifles. This is definitely not one of those. This is something much, much worse. But I tell you, it works, folks. She works. I'm interested to see how she groups once we get the scope dialed in more. It's pretty close. Like, I did no adjustments. I literally put this together and took it to the range and you just saw shoot it for the first time no adjustments of any kind yet so uh, i did move this but i moved it back as y'all saw so i never actually shot this with any uh adjustments i made we're at zero on both positions here of the scope so from shooting i could tell you there's a few more adjustments i think i can make here definitely shoots a little bit high i had to aim low that's to be expected uh, but other than that, I can't really complain. Like, yes, it's very easy to hate this gun, but from, given that it's a Mosin, and a really ugly Mosin, from just a shooting pleasure perspective, I don't really have that many complaints. This is one of the nicest Mosins I've ever shot when it comes to the joy of just shooting it. Because it's like, it's horrible. I don't really care if I, you know, scratch it or anything. Uh, who, how are you even going to notice, right? I mean, look, this gun's horrible. It's just, it's just fun. It's a fun toy, and I feel like that's what how Mosins really should be. And I think that's one of the reasons we've always been attracted to them. It's a very blue-collar gun, you know. They're attainable for a lot of people in a lot of different countries, and you can do. It's like a a blank slate. You can leave it the way it is, or you could turn it into this abomination. There's all sorts of fun stuff you can do. I like this scope, man, alive. Yeah, this is this is a nice gun, folks. So thank you all for watching. I hope you guys you guys got a kick out of taking David Shipman to the range here. If you like this setup here at the bench where we do some shooting, let me know, and we'll do a lot more shooting here from now on. If y'all like this format, um, we'll do a lot of shooting with actual like historical configuration modes and finish Mosins, and just all sorts of Mosins. Because let's face it, this is a Mosin channel. What else are we going to shoot besides some interesting guns thrown in here and there? Mosins, mostly. Mostly moldy Mosins, folks. So thank you guys for watching.
If you guys like more Mosin to Gunk content like this, please consider subscribing. Let me know if y'all have any prayer requests, and we'll see you next time.